Greetings, comrades, and welcome to the Rad Gaming Podcast. I'm Pesco. I'm Jemshi. In this episode of the podcast, we interview the Viking Beard, a very positive and engaging streamer in the Twitch community. In this interview, we talk about his competitive personality and how it drives him to continually improve his daily streams, of which his current streak is over 300. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by the Rad Community. The Rad Community is an extremely supportive gaming and streaming community that firmly believes in support for support, not follow for follow. So get ready to grow some facial hair, ladies and gentlemen, because it's time to climb aboard those long boats and set sail with the Viking Beat. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rad Gaming Podcast, your great spot for all your streaming needs, gaming, and even esports. Starring your hosts, the one and only Pescador and Jemshi. Please give me like a rundown of your childhood. Until your streaming time, if you don't mind. Sure. So um, I was born in Montana, moved from Montana to Washington State, then into Virginia. Bounced around in Virginia with a uh, military family <clears throat> until now, basically. Um, had gone to um, a bunch of different schools. My, my dad, basically, military, decided that hey, we're going to stay in this one place until you graduate from high school, my sister and I. And um, so we stayed there. I did uh, sports. I was a member of a ROTC drill team, national championship drill team. Oh, wow. Um, I've done um, – I was a three-time Virginia State champion uh, small bore rifle what? Um, competitor. Um, oh I goodness. went to the junior Olympics for shooting. So I've done a lot of stuff, but, um, after kind of all of that high school stuff went down, I uh, went to college at uh, North Georgia college state university in Dahlonega, Georgia, Jeez. and then, uh, came back home when life kind of caught up. Um, so where is home for you? Sorry. I, you've been I'm around everywhere. So. Hampton Roads, Virginia. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's seven cities here, but, um, Hampton Roads, Virginia, I've, I've lived in, um, Chesapeake, Virginia Beach, and uh, Norfolk. Wow, you've been basically everywhere across the United States. Just, yeah. well, oh my goodness! <laughs> and you said drill team. Uh, you, you were um, in the Olympics for. I'm um, sorry, junior, what, junior Olympics. Junior, sorry, sorry, Junior Olympics. Yeah. So I did. Um, uh, my sister, okay, being a competitive uh, sibling rivalry, rivalry as they say. I basically. Uh, my sister was two years ahead of me uh, in school, and she had found some success um, shooting a uh, small bore target rifle. I mean, she was winning trophies and medals and all kinds of stuff. And I, I'm like, man, if she can do it, I can do it too. So uh, <laughs> I can do it better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can do it better than her. So. Uh, that didn't end up being the case for about three years. <laughs> so when I finally <laughs> caught up to her, she kicked my butt pretty good for a really long time. And um, the first time that I was ever able to beat her, uh, we were shooting outside at, uh, in Asheville, North Carolina. And she was used to a more controlled environment. And I just didn't even let it bother me. It was like, frost on the ground wind blowing like i it didn't bother me so um that was the first time we were ever able i was ever able to beat her but um, we had won many 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 trophies team trophies individual trophies you know medals all kinds of awards uh between her and i and one of my other friend we pretty much anchored that team for about three years that's awesome and um it it was pretty cool but as far as the drill team championship um, concerned it was in 1999 <laughs> the coca-cola uh, national drill team championship i was on that team so so now you play video games i mean you went yeah. from one extreme to the next and geez what <laughs> got you started on video games if you don't mind me asking sure uh so i have a really good friend uh that is active in my stream 
almost every day, if not every day, every other day. Uh, he was introduced to my family. Um, my mom was friends with his mom and we just kind of became buddies. And uh, he pretty much introduced me to EverQuest. Uh, and I played EverQuest for about five years and an absolute asinine amount of hours. You got hooked? Oh, yeah. So hey, you want to explain EverQuest for those who probably don't know? Sure. EverQuest is um, a basically the grandfather of the 3D MMO. So there were MMOs prior to EverQuest, but EverQuest was the first MMO uh, that was produced that you could actually see and interact with your character as your character. So you could have a first-person or a third-person perspective of your character. So because of that, um, there were interactions that weren't previously available. Like you could actually walk up to a goblin and punch it in the face. And you know, that, that kind of thing <laughs> wasn't there before. It was always like a top down or a text based style. So what I just ate up all your time. So when did you, uh, <laughs> switch out from EverQuest then? So when I went to um, my freshman year of college at North Georgia, um, the guys on my dorm hall all played Quake. And I, again, being in a hyper competitive military alpha male, you know, that kind of structure, it was like, well, I'm going to be the best Quake player that there is. And so I started <laughs> playing Quake. And EverQuest kind of got put on a back burner. And um, I became like hyper, hyper competitive in first person shooters. So that kind of led me away from MMO for a while. Um, when I came back home uh, from my freshman year of college, uh, I found Call of Duty. And with Call of Duty, which Call I of Duty was that? The original. <laughs> oh man! Wow. <laughs> the original. So I found Call of Duty, yeah. and I kind of worked my way into a clan, and then got into. For those people that would remember, like TWL and Cal, and worked through Cal in um, Call of Duty, Call of Duty Two, um, and then in Call of Duty Four. Um, I actually worked into making some money at it. So I was a sponsored Call of Duty 4 player. Wow. Uh, I played on several different teams, uh, have been to four or five different lands, um, but basically was a sponsored player and won money playing Call of Duty uh, 4 more than anything else. And then once that scene kind of died because um, – other games were coming out and things of that nature. I moved on uh, with some of those friends to uh, World of Warcraft. Oh, so that, that got me hooked as well. I yeah. I know that story all too well. What's your uh, main character on World of Warcraft? Uh, Warrior. Warriors. So when I originally started in vanilla, um, I played as a warlock. I took a warlock to High Warlord and a rogue to High Warlord on the uh, Horde side on Argent Dawn. And <clears throat> that account got hacked and permanently banned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you do? Oh, uh, I didn't do anything. It was whoever took possession of the account basically used it as a uh, real-life transaction situation. Uh, and I have tried to get it back several times and have not been able to merge that account onto my current account which is unfortunate. But. I'm sure you put a ton of hours into that, actually. Yeah. Well, really you, you know, if you were a vanilla player, oh, you know, yeah. High Warlord was yeah. hours and hours, and I did it twice. I've had my account hacked, actually, too. I'm not even going to lie. And then mm -hmm. I got the, uh, what is that, uh, the key gen. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. I had to get one because my account got hacked and uh, locked, and I couldn't get it back. So that was that's a fun time. I swear everyone that plays WoW gets their account hacked. At least once. Yeah, oh, yeah. For, it's for sure. better now, but because yeah. of the authenticators and stuff on your phone and whatnot. But yeah. So where did the name the Viking Beard come from? Mm. What happened with the Viking Beard is originally I was 
in Call of Duty, I played as uh, the Forsaken one. Well, I played Call of Duty for a long time, up until almost the end of Call of Duty 4 in that, like, Cal Invitational, Cal Main type of scene. And I changed my name from the Forsaken one to Viking Beard because I was at a at a LAN tournament and people kept saying, hey, man, you look like a Viking. I pretty <laughs> much, all right, well, I'll run with it. And at first it just was kind of like, oh, yeah, I just in, embrace it and uh, and ran with it. And I've been the Viking Beard since, gosh, I think that's probably 06 something like that and that was before your long beard stint though you said right you said right. your baby Correct. baby uh face bald at what what is that oh wait yeah okay all right <laughs> I, I yeah i did uh 2008 i was the last time that i was completely baby bald bare face shaved was in 2008 yeah what's the reason for that Oh, I did it for a woman. Ah, uh, yeah, that's usually how it is. That's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I did it for a woman, and then uh, that ended up not working out. And I said that I would never do that again. And <laughs> did it so, not work yeah. out because of what she saw after you shaved, or nah, other... <laughs> other reasons, distance more more than anything. But yeah, it's understandable. Then you went the opposite end of the spectrum and grew it down to your belly button. Is that how that yeah. went? <laughs> yeah. okay. So uh, I pretty much. You know, I, the job I was working at the time, um, that my beard was the longest. I basically was in construction slash, um, bouncing, I guess is the best way to put it. Bouncing. So it was like, uh, it was like a intimidation factor, security, that kind of thing. Anyway, um, I grew the beard out. I just let it roll for basically a year and a half. What did you and, work at uh, a biker bar? Jeez, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but you know, different, like a couple of different places, but yeah. I did security for a, um, a major retailer, but it, um, it was good. I, I let the beard roll down just to, and no one ever said anything. They pretty much were like, as long as it's somewhat groomed and it doesn't look like a rat's nest, we'll let you do what you need to do. But um, after that, I ended up, uh, moving in that same company to a different position. And when I did that, I had, had to be quote unquote more professional. So the beard got trimmed down to a reasonable level. What's reasonable <laughs> to you? I mean, <laughs> it was at the belly button. So, I mean, anything, you know, past the breasts, I guess would be probably considered reasonable. Sure. Um, I took it basically to about an inch in length, an inch to an inch and a half in length. Uh, overall it's a pretty and, drastic change yeah yeah it, in <laughs> fact when the uh the uh barber that specialized in basically beard trimming um cut it i i told her i said nancy nancy you are the only person to ever cut my beard ever other than me and she kind of looked at me and teared up a little bit, no joke, and was like, are you sure you want me to do this? And I'm like, yeah, got to do it for the job. So um, it was a kind of a being in like the security and everything. It was kind of like a running joke that, hey, I'll pull your beard off. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck, dude. So um, a part of that, that whole Viking beard process, right? I know that some of like, Pescador, you've you've seen obviously on stream that I have weaponry behind me on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it also. It's pretty sick. Okay. So a lot of that I actually learned how to use because I um, found someone of similar interest at a at that same retail company, and I learned how to fight with a sword and shield, spear, axe, glaive. Um, Sign me up. Powder. Where do you where do you do this, Sam? I, I want to learn to fight with some of these things, man. So um, the organization is the Society for Creative Acronisms, otherwise known as the SCA. Um, they're active all over the country. And um, there are several very large wars. And what I mean by that is it is what some people would call it LARPing, but it's much more full contact and people can get injured if you're being dishonorable, I guess is the best way to put it. So um 
some of the weapons that are on my wall through honorable combat and that's um, awesome yeah so if fighting you... and knowing how to use them is completely kind of a necessary thing to me I'm, what, what was your question i'm sorry uh no no you're fine i was gonna ask on that topic um you have you do have this giant wall of weapons where did you come up with the idea for that uh well i originally um uh, when i first started streaming um i thought you know hey I have some stuff that I can put on the wall. Um, people have different backgrounds and different interesting things, you know, lights and um, gaming gear or like the funk pop figurines, you know, a bunch of different stuff. Like what would be something that no one else has? Okay. So I'm like, all right, I, the, I have this stuff, this material at hand. Why not use swords, axes, you know, that kind of thing. And I started originally with just, um, a sword and then kind of expanded from there. I mean, I had all of them um, that are currently on the wall with the exception of I think one of the axes I added in addition from that time. Um, but it was just a way to be different. Something that would, when someone was browsing through, if they're looking at the thumbnail, they might see and be like, damn, what is that? What's that all about? So it was more of a curiosity catcher than anything. So what is your weapon of choice? Uh, if I were in an arena of combat to the death and given the choice of weaponry, it would be a Cestus. Cestus. Can you, I, I have no idea what that <laughs> was uh, or is, I should say. Can you? So yeah. basically think of like, it's a Roman slash Greek gladiatorial weapon. It's based on brutality basically think of like wolverine's claws but in a single claw kind of like uh what's a good gaming um a zealot from starcraft 2 okay so the blade from a zealot basically of steel um it's all about getting up close and personal you basically punch through people with it my lord is that um, violent <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's all about getting as close as you possibly can to somebody and inflicting the most damage possible. That would be my weapon of choice because it, given that situation, you know, again, being backed up into a corner, no other choice, can't run away, can't do anything. It's about getting the job done as quickly as you can, you know. <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> I noticed when you have um, followers, you know, follow you on stream, Mm -hmm. You take an axe off your wall or, you know, whatever it may be, and you smash it into the target behind you. Sure. Where did you get that idea? And what made you start <laughs> doing that? So, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things that is, again, it's kind of an attention grabber. Um, when you go into a lot of streams, somebody will get a follow or a donation or a subscription or a host or a raid or whatever the case may be. And it's like, hey, you know, thanks so-and-so for the, the host. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. I wanted to take it a step further and really say, you know, hey, I'm, I, even if I'm playing a game and I'm in an intense moment, I want to recognize you as an individual creating an interpersonal relationship with that person and saying, hey, I recognize that you've given me a sub or a follow or whatever the case may be, whatever is triggering that event and really, you know, make it a personal moment for them. And that usually creates a level of buy-in that goes beyond, hey, thanks for that sub. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, I know you take the time out and you usually drop whatever game if you can at that moment right. and, you yeah. know, stare into the camera and just slam that axe in there and say thank you for the follow so sure yeah you really make it a personable uh and it's actually really warm and inviting as weird as that sounds when you as as warm and inviting as it can be when you smash an axe into something so sure yeah. that's well i've had a lot of people say oh man should i feel threatened no not at all it's more of uh it's, it's more of an honoring of you thank you then hey i want to chop you up it's not really the same thing <laughs> So what was the first game you've ever played on stream? Hearthstone was the first game that I played on stream. Um, 
one of my friends wanted to see me play Hearthstone because he didn't understand um, the processes that I was doing to get into the lower ranks. And he wanted to see why I was making the decisions that I was making. And he wanted to try to understand if this is happening, why are you acting in that way? So it, it was an effort to help one of my friends uh, and it was Hearthstone. Gotcha. I, I've seen you play Hearthstone a few times and it seems like a very uh, interesting and tactical game. I, I, I've i never really played. I've never really gotten to card games. I know that back oh, in the yeah. day with Pokemon <laughs> and stuff was a huge thing. I know that... Um, hmm. What is... Oh, man. Magic the Gathering. Magic, thank you. Yeah, Jeez, I, I play a lot of Magic the Gathering, so... Really? I tried. I got my... I got very... destroyed. <laughs> my DCI number is so old that when I go to, like, paper tournaments and stuff, people act like I'm royalty. It's really weird. <laughs> you go to Magic the Gathering tournaments? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I uh, competed um, in some PTQs. And, oh, my goodness. Uh, is there PTQs something you didn't? compete in man like it seems like every time i talk to you something something completely different well i mean you know when you have wide and varied interests you're kind of if if you have the freedom to do the things that you want to as far as pursuing that why not do it um, absolutely kind of live your life you know yeah. you get one yeah and is there anything that you do off stream since you have so many unique uh I guess, passions that I, I hear you keep on telling and bringing up. Is there anything that you haven't covered that you do outside of streaming? Uh, well, something that I, I pretty much have not. I've talked about it a couple of times on stream, but um, I, I haven't figured out a way to how to do it on stream yet. I have an idea for it, but um, in an effort to kind of develop a more adult relationship with my dad, uh, a relationship that was, you know, beyond the, hey, go do this for me, son, you know, that kind of thing, uh, yeah. but like a, a meaningful adult relationship with my dad that says, hey, we're, we're, we're friends. We always have been friendly with each other, but I want to be able to hang out with you uh, as an adult. We're going to go do stuff together. Um, I learned how to ride a motorcycle in 2011, and I have been to Every state east of the Mississippi and all the Canadian provinces that from Ontario east on a motorcycle. Oh, man. Do you fit so, the persona just perfect, man? You have that <laughs> beard. All you need is, a, yeah. what is that, called a cut? Isn't that what they call The bikers yeah, call it a cut. cut. I'm sorry, I watched Sons of Anarchy the whole way through, yeah, yeah. and that was, uh, you know, some of the things they talked about. But, man, you fit it perfectly. So you yeah. telling me you were driving a motorcycle does not even phase me in the least. I mean, I, I kind of... <laughs> Kind of seems like something you would do, yeah. <laughs> in a I good can way. Imagine you riding on the highway, having one of your axes just slung over your your back. <laughs> I have a <laughs> or on uh, your side, a, a tank holster for a hammer. Oh my god! I thought you said you had a tank. I was just like, okay, like no, no. <laughs> a toy tank. Just so I thought you were couldn't get any more badass. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you stream literally every single day, but is there any time that you do watch any streamers? And if you do watch streamers, what is like the streams that you really enjoy? What do you look for? I watch streams every single day. Man. And I watch, not only do I watch streams every single day, I look for new streamers every single day. I very often, if you had me friended on, on Twitch, you will find me in very small streamers, very big streamers. I will be talking to different people every single day. Um, one of the reasons that I do that is because what are they doing really well? What are they doing not so well? What could I improve upon based upon what they're doing? And what am I doing just flat out better than them? So it's like, a information sponge basically i go and i look but it's not just about me i actually have met some absolutely amazing people um because i go into so many random streams and i'm like hey how are you what's their reaction time to chat yeah are we waiting are we playing the jeopardy theme song before they answer me <laughs> If if that's the case, I'm probably gonna leave. Yeah, you know, um, if they react fairly quickly to chat, 
are they personable? Are they toxic? Like what's going on with them? And I've found people that, you know, I have a really big Brazilian contingency. They don't even understand English, but they come and watch my stream because I've made friends with a Brazilian streamer. I truly enjoy him. Um, when he got partnered, when he got partnered, he came in and I saw his check, check mark beside his name. It literally made me cry on stream. I was so happy for him that it created an emotional response. I have never experienced that before where it was just like, damn, I'm so happy for this guy that my friend is a partner now. And, and so there's a lot to it. You're I, with him along that journey. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Helping, helping him, uh, hosting him occasionally. Uh, he has brought so many people to me um, that they might not understand English, but they like to come in and uh, one of my moderators, uh, North Star Angel, will actually translate English to Portuguese for them in chat. <laughs> awesome. So it's, it's pretty cool. We, we do uh, a lot of different things. And it's not only that, but there's like this European, I mean, like there's people from all over the world, which is amazing to me. But yeah, I, I definitely, I kind of went off topic there a little bit. I, I look no, at streams fine. every day, every day. So, so it's just for learning and also just to establish connections and make friends, right? Well, learning, establishing connections, making friends, you know, creating a greater community. But at the same time, man, who doesn't like watching Shroud pop people's heads, man? I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, it's true. like it's like the most amazing thing. I honestly find myself more of a Tim the Tatman kind of guy because uh, I think he's hilarious. And I... I you know, I have my different times when I enjoy skill, and, uh, but I, I sure. do enjoy uh, comedy a lot, though. So, But when you go through these streams and really look at each streamer, mm -hmm. what are the things that you like really stand out to you? What really makes a good streamer a good streamer? Uh, I know you mentioned and said something on the lines of, you know, how they interact with chat, um, the response time, if they're personable. But is there anything like you would recommend someone to do that really separates them from the rest uh if you choose to have a cam make sure that it's clear you don't have to it's becoming it's kind of come back around where it used to be uh it was faux pas to not have a camera and then some streamers had success without a camera and then everybody had a camera and now some streamers are going back away from cameras and going to uh, pure gameplay. So if you have a camera, make it clear. And whatever your audio situation is, make it as clear and as good as you can. So if I come into your stream and there's nothing wrong with it, you can have as many children as you want. But if your wife is screaming at your kids in the background, probably <laughs> not going to stay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Is there any pet peeves <laughs> that you have with certain streamers? Like um, my pet peeve is asking for a donation. That drives me insane and that will leave me, oh, well, that will make me leave immediately. I, um, really the only thing that has ever got to leave the stream immediately is uh, if their reaction to you is oh, like overly harsh in the negative like if you ask a you know seemingly harmless question that you're not trolling you're not trying to be funny it's a genuine question and if they're overly harsh and negative i'll just leave like i'm, I'm not gonna to deal with that but uh, it makes perfect sense i mean is there any situation that you can share with us that you can kind of give an example of uh of sure so um there I stream a, a huge amount of games, a huge amount of games. I'm thinking like around 50 ish different games that I've streamed now. Yeah. Um, there are times when I'll, I'll pick a game and I'll want to learn about it a little bit before I put my feet in the water, as they say. Okay. Do I, do I actually want to play this on stream? How will I be able to interact with the people in chat when I play this on stream? Um, is it possible? Some games you have to focus so much that it's not really possible. 
um, to have a good positive interaction. So I have gone to some streams um, for some of the Steam games. You know, there, there's a bunch of different stuff, but some of the Steam games. And I asked a question like, hey, when you killed that enemy, um, is there a reason that you did it in that way? And the response was basically like, you know, GTFO noob, you don't belong in here. If you have to ask what? a question like that, then you should just leave. And I'm like, okay, bye. Oh, geez, <laughs> so you <man>. did leave. <laughs> so I left, you know, like, I, I don't know if I'm being genuine and I'm asking a question like that. Um, I understand that the internet's full of trolls and stuff like, you know, yeah. there are people that are constantly um, trying to find ways to get you to say stupid stuff or troll you and stuff like that. It's just, to me, you just have to understand that that's going to happen, but be as friendly as you can to people. And when that guy basically nuked me out of chat, I was like, okay, well, I'm never coming back here again. <laughs> <laughs> so have there ever been any, uh, something that you kind of always cringe at when you look back on your stream? Uh, Guess not. I can't, I can't, like I, can't, I, can't re- I can't really think of anything that was uh embarrassing. I've had some definitely like surprise moments that were like, oh wow, what the hell just happened? Um so Merlin's my parrot. Merlin um is about nine years old. He just learned how to fly as a nine year old parrot because up until I owned Merlin, uh he had always had his wings clipped. So he just learned how to fly. And um, I have a sit-stand desk that's programmable, et cetera. And uh, I was standing up. I was playing a game. And all of a sudden, Merlin just flew into the frame and landed on my shoulder. That is the scariest shit. <laughs> <laughs> what were you playing at the time? That uh... I was playing Call of Duty. And oh. I was like top 10 in a battle royale and all of a sudden the bird is like landing on me it scared me half to death um (laughs) but as far as like uh embarrassing stuff no not really i mean there's there's always like one of the things that i always say is like i twitch has taught me very quickly that i i do not have the ability to pronounce anyone's name Unfortunately, oh, I have that so, same. Oh, I have the same oh, no. feeling, man. I can I can, can't read, so it's it's a different story. So, wow. <laughs> so the 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 lead speak, you know, when ones and threes are bees and things like that. Yeah. Um, I ran into a situation where a community had come over and I misread somebody's name, and it became like a whole funny thing for their entire community. Uh, so instead of brandy, it was brand thirteen. I don't know. You know there's, <laughs> Well, there's still- <laughs> yeah <laughs> so currently in the gaming world is there anything that has your attention like games gear software anything like that mm. uh so there's a game coming out in two days so wednesday that really has my attention in the short term um it's atlas Atlas is made by the same company that made Ark. Uh, It is going to be a 40,000 player, 45,000 square kilometer game with 700 locations, 700 plus unique locations. So it's a survival game um, based around piracy. Oh so man, so ships yeah. and all of that, yeah. Oh, it's like sea. Uh, what was that? Uh, sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Yep. Thank you. So it's like a bigger scale of that. Oh yeah, oh, much man. much bigger. Man, that's exciting. So Sea of Thieves. Typically, there's about six different ships on a server at a time. Um, so that's a total of a maximum of like 24 players. Maximum. We're talking about 40,000 people. In, an, in the same server. I'm so. just wondering how that can even, oh, how that even work. I mean, just the sheer number of people in a server. I mean, wouldn't you expect some latency? Oh, of course. So there's going to be uh, no doubt there'll be issues, but um, very similar to Eve Online. That's true. Um, Separated Eve, different areas, and yeah, they have makes sense. Yeah. So I'm sure there's going to be either some form of like what Blizzard does, which is sharding. Yeah. Um, or instancing or whatever the case may be, but it's a 40,000 person server. PVP, one server, PVE, another server. So you can opt in or out. 
Yeah, it sounds like a, an awesome game. Is there any other games or gear that you have your you know eye on right now? Maybe to help improve your stream. Um, so, <clears throat> games wise, uh, yeah, there's one other thing that I actually uh, put in um, in support of for Kickstarter. Uh, it's Ashes of Creation. Um, it's just entering into its open beta phases. Ashes of Creation is a probably one of the most player driven games that I've seen in that um, you you or your group of you know guildmates can determine what happens in a, a space. So what I mean by that is if you decide that hey this mountain we're going to mine this mountain in eventuality as you're mining that mountain there is the potential that you could unleash any number of things like a dragon or a molten lava worm uh any number of creatures could could happen because of that so you're saying all your actions have consequences in a sense to be like environmental Mm -hmm. that's that's really cool and there's a sense of permanence because you as an individual player can actually make something in the game that is going to be there forever so that's uh that's something that a lot of mmos a lot of games have gone away from like what makes you an individual like in in just as an example in world of warcraft right um the big thing is transmog well what armor are you actually wearing are you a badass or like you know you can't really tell anymore. Whereas in older MMOs, you knew that guy that you were facing was absolutely awesome, was in a killer guild because of the armor that he was wearing yeah. or she was wearing. You just knew. Yeah. Um, but as far as equipment is concerned, uh, I just recently upgraded my microphone and brought in a mixer board. Um, so my audio setup has been significantly upgraded um i'm also looking at uh building a new pc from scratch um and there is the potential on the horizon that there not to put it out there too soon but basically i'm looking at a way to stream from the motorcycle (laughs) oh so some kind of irl stream Mm. yeah have you ever seen such and such a place? Well, here, I want to ride my bike and you come on the trip with me. <laughs> Aren't you afraid of stream snipers? I mean, someone no, just really. coming out of <laughs> coming out of nowhere. Just oh, to, yeah. Well, I mean, the the thing about that is uh the whole se- working security and stuff like that before, I'm not very Oh, yeah, you have a hammer on the side of your bike. What am I talking right. about? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Worried about that too much. And, and generally speaking, one thing that has absolutely been uh, surprising and, and pleasantly surprising, but amazing to me at the same time, is that overwhelmingly on Twitch, I have found that the intention is good. For the most part, people are there to enjoy themselves. They're not there to troll. They're not there to give you a hard time. They're not there to create problems that segment of the pie does exist of course yeah but generally speaking um people have been very kind and that's people from all over the world um so i don't know i i'm i've been fairly straightforward about you know hey i live in Rose, virginia um you know 35 years old i've worked at this place this place and this place these are the experiences that i've done um I, all of that information could be gathered by a hacker in a heartbeat. Yeah, absolutely. So, so is that something you've done purposely to, was that to like establish a connection? Kind of like what was the re- reason you just decided to be so open about it? Um, for, for basically two reasons. One, because like I said, I, a good hacker will find that information out no matter what, and then they're going to release it maliciously. So if it's out there to begin with, there's nothing to worry about there. It's just there there is no concern because it's already out. Um, and then the second reason is you you do create a, a buy-in. Um, I actually had one of my subscribers, one of my followers, um, I found out, hey, I, I grew up in Lynchburg, Virginia. 
I went to Heritage High School. And he was like, for real? Yeah, man. It's like, dude, I grew up in Lynchburg too. I went to Brookville. I'm like, yeah, I literally, my best friend went to Brookville High School and we had a whole discussion about his favorite places to eat in Lynchburg. And, and the whole stream kind of got derailed by the <laughs> fact that we were hometown buddies and we didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> so like just putting that out there you don't you know you you never know you never know gotcha i know you said that you just got a new mic and everything like that and a, mm. a mixer um can you what kind of mic did you get what kind of mixer and sure. why did you get that uh so the mixer that i got was the yamaha gu i'm sorry uh, what was that the yamaha mg10 xu uh, mg10 xu okay okay uh and i got the re20 is the microphone that i got it's a real real voice a uh, real tech re20 um the microphone was basically a toss-up between uh that and the the one i have it bookmarked right here let me grab it for you over the second um anyway i'll talk about the mixer while i'm looking at this. <laughs> no, so the 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 mg 10 xu uh the reason that i grabbed that particular mixer is if you look at some of the larger streams larger streamers that uh use multiple sources for their uh video gathering what i mean by that is they'll have their pc they play pc games but they also play playstation they also play xbox they also play nintendo switch um how are they doing that and how is the audio consistent between each system? And uh, a lot of the answer was several different mixer boards, but the common theme was this mixer board in particular. And there are 10 inputs on this mixer that allow you to manipulate sound from 10 different audio sources. So right now I am using three of them actively in my stream. Um, which allows me to separate out game sound, uh, music if I so choose, and then my voice uh, communication, so Discord. I can change the volumes on those, by, which is very nice and convenient. Um, as far as the microphone is concerned, RE20 was basically a recommendation from a friend of mine who's a streamer. Um, I helped him with his uh, his setup. Uh, when he first got his new microphone, the RE20, some squeals, some hiss, it had some issues going on with it. Um, and I kind of helped him work through it. And he basically said, Hey, if you're looking to do a microphone upgrade, I can highly recommend. And he sounds good on his microphone. So I said, okay. So I looked at that. And then I looked at also the, uh, SureMic SM7B which okay. is a very common microphone that you'll see on many, many, many. Yeah, I know it's one you're talking about. <laughs> the, the reason I went with RE20 is it has a wider uh, range of sound frequency. So the tones that it picks up have a wider range, which allows you to do different sounds a lot more so clarity it, on kind of like exactly the different pitches. right it's it's just a, a a little bit clearer not like that sure mic hey that's a fantastic microphone and you're not going <laughs> to go wrong going with that yes um it's just the the closest thing that i can explain it by is i have um astro a50 wireless headset fantastic beautiful you see people with them frequently I think uh, like um, Trainwreck has Astro A50s, okay? There's an example of a big streamer that has that headset. They sound good, nothing wrong with them at all. But when I was playing PUBG, I could not hear footsteps. That's a common issue, right? A lot of people can't hear footsteps in that game because the audio is a little weird or whatever the case may be. Yeah. I switched to Sennheiser 599s and I can hear everything. The difference between the two, both of them are very high quality, similar in price, a little bit of a difference, but very similar in price. The Sennheisers have a much wider band of audio frequency available, which allows you to hear a richer, deeper experience 
in the audio. So um, it's basically in an effort to be able to hear and put out the best quality audio that I can. I got you. I, I, I noticed I had an issue a long time ago with uh, PUBG as well. So I actually mm. ended up getting uh, uh, HyperX um, just because mm. I, I was able to hear a lot better. Uh, unfortunately, I was strapped with money uh, issues at, at that point in time, but uh, it was actually, it worked out really well in my favor. I mean, they're, they're still great headset. Mm. And that's one of the things that um, if you're, if you're going to stream, if you're going to make the time commitment to put in hours every single day to doing something, whether that's streaming, uh, any hobby or passion, really, right? Right. In, anything like that, equip yourself properly. Um, because being realistic, if I were to wear earbuds every single day for five to 12 hours a day, every day, it'd be awful. It'd be awful. You know, you don't want to wear something that makes you uncomfortable. Those really aren't the best for your ears either. No, they'll blow your eardrums out and mess up exactly. your, your follicles that actually allow you to hear and all of that stuff. So. so I noticed I was in one of your streams and you happened to be celebrating your 300th straight stream. Yep. That's an impressive milestone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How... Did you get to that point? I mean, there has to be some point in time that you're like, man, I don't want to stream today. Absolutely. What kind of gave you that push to, I guess, soldier through those times? So I can think of two immediate examples. Well, three. I can think of three immediate examples of times that I had to soldier through. Uh, day 172. I was so sick that I just, I had a headache. I was nauseous. I was just, I was messed up. I was messed up. And I didn't stream the entire five hours, but I did put in, I think, three on that day. Um, And I just, I couldn't take it anymore. I was just so sick. Like, I I literally couldn't take it. Um, Did anything happen on stream or was it? No. Like, was it noticeable? Oh yeah, people knew. People like the people <laughs> that were there that are there with me every day, or you know, if not every day, frequently they were coming in and like, dude, you just need to go to bed. <laughs> like, like <laughs> you're 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 clearly something is wrong with you. Um, and then speaking of the 300 consecutive days, on day 299, a storm came through Hampton Roads, and when the storm came through, uh, it knocked out a bunch of power and things of that nature. So on 299, um, I dropped 66% of my frames. It was one of the worst uh, internet conductivity streams that I've ever done. It was absolutely horrible, super discouraging. Um, and I basically begged the internet company. I'm like, dude, I am doing something that I've been working up to for 300 days. Please send me a text, (laughs) please. And they did. And they actually solved it. And I was able to do that 300 consecutive, um, day streaming celebration, um, 24 hours with 24 plus games and really just kind of celebrate and enjoy it. Um, but yeah, there, there are certainly times when I wake up in the morning and mood, we're all human, right? But I think that the, the drive to continue forward, um, can really be, I, I had a stream, I had a stream that I went to a mountain in World of Warcraft and I wouldn't let it be me. What I mean by that is it looked, it appeared to be climbable to me. Um, and I climbed that mountain for four and a half hours on stream oh and I died God. over and over and I failed over and over. And people were telling me it was really actually super interesting to see. There was basically two groups of people in chat, the group of people that were, you know, in the negative saying, dude, just give up. You can't do it. Give up. Just stop. You're punishing yourself. You should just quit. 
And I thought to myself, I'm like, this is a very good example of no matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter how you are towards me, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep persevering. I'm going to get to the top of the mountain. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. And it took me four and a half hours. And when I got to the top, uh, it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, it was. One Your of those chat things. was just blowing up. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, it was crazy. There was, you know, bits and donations and subs and all that other stuff, which is, that's not why I was doing it. It was more of a, a statement stream of no matter how many times I get knocked down, it's not about falling down. It's about how high you bounce when you hit the bottom. You know? Yeah. Patton was a pretty smart dude. When he said that, you know, it's not about how far you fall. It's about how high you bounce when you hit the bottom. So you seem like you're a very positive individual. I remember going into one of your streams and I, I'm going to botch this completely. Sure. But uh, at one point in time, I asked you a question about, um, I can't believe you're still, still going strong, man. And you said something on the lines of, you know, if you're going to do something, why half ass it? Right. You said something more or less on the lines of, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to give it my all, or what's the point of even doing it at all? Right. Yeah. And that uh, is that still kind of stuck with me to, to this day, man. I uh, try to use that philosophy. I really do. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that um, that was kind of instilled in me by my mom, actually. Uh, my mom was... Uh, you know, obviously very important having a good mom, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah. it was like, if you're going to learn how to do the dishes, do the dishes the best you can until they're, they're perfect. You know, yeah. if you're going to, if you're going to learn how to do something, do it. Don't do you think that's where your do competitive edge came in too. Kind of no, just like, that was because of my sister. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking you always wanted to do the best, you know? Yeah. Well, so here's the thing. If you if you do the absolute best that you can do, 100%, and you can look at yourself in the mirror and you can tell yourself, this is the absolute, I cannot do any more than I've done, and you fail, can you be upset with that? I don't think so. If you have done every possible thing that you can humanly do, and it's just not enough, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens. That's that's real. That's real life. Yeah, it's, that's yeah, it's, it's life. I mean, yeah. yeah, I guess sometimes, you won't regret not trying or that's right. Having not tried enough. So that's it. Kind of comes back to some of the things, like you guys said. Hey, you've done a lot of different things. Why not? Yeah. You know, l live. We're we're here. I mean, I I was trying to explain to somebody not too long ago that hey, have you ever jumped off of a house? I'm not telling you to do that. You know, I, I don't want you to hurt yourself. But have you ever done anything that's like, damn, why did I do that? Yeah, you know, take risk. You know, it's it's about risk assessment, understanding where you are, and giving it what you got. Give it what you got, or don't do it. Absolutely. So hey. Kind of along that uh, theme. So, what's something that you wish you knew when you first started streaming? <laughs> Uh, so if you were to, if you were to pull my VODs from streams, it's definitely probably audio video quality. Um, <laughs> it's, it's something that's so important. Um, I've, I've always been very open, honest, and, and kind with people, even, even the trolls. I've only probably, I think I've been maybe six people the entire time I've been streaming. Um, which is crazy to me. Um, 327 days in a row, you would think that it would be more than that. But um, instilling a certain sense of community within your community, like, is something that if I were recommending highly to someone who is starting out, make it make it what you want it to be. Because if you want it to be like meme lord, you know, crazy, like on the edge type of stream, that's what it's going to be. You you are the content creator. You have the ability to 
drive your community in a certain direction. And it became very evident to me. Uh, I guess it was probably about two months ago. I had a had a troll come into chat and my chat just ripped him apart with positivity. And it was <laughs> it was like the most amazing thing. It felt so good that it wasn't done in a mean way. It wasn't done in a hateful way. They just tore them apart with kindness. And it was just so amazing, man. Like, uh, knowing that now, I'm very happy that I did that. And I'm not a big streamer in the sense of, you know, the greater, you know, sphere of things. I'm, not, I'm just, I'm not, you know, a 40,000 concurrent viewer person. But we all have a lot of power as someone who is representing yourself, your community, you have a lot of power, even as a small streamer that says, Hey, this behavior is acceptable to me. And I have an expectation as you, as a member of the community for you as a member of the community to act a certain way. And um, it's pretty interesting that other streamers have come to me and said, Hey, you know, so-and-so is in my chat and they're just so nice and you introduced them to my my stream you know by hosting me or um you know just chatting with me and they happen to be in there and they're just so nice where did you find them you know and surrounding yourself with those types of people is just something that is if that's what you're trying to do do it but if you want to be you know a toxic meme lord go for it nothing wrong with that just know what you're getting into you know? Yeah. I know you said something about uh, you were at two, what was it? Uh, the 327, you said, stream? 20, uh, something like that? 300, 327 today? I think. I don't know. Let me look. I, I, no, you're fine. I, I, so here's the thing. I mean, I'm getting old, man. I gotta. No, you're fine. I was just going to ask. <laughs> is it at, <laughs> at 365. Do you have something planned? Something big going to happen? Because it's, it's inevitable um, to happen. It's going to get to that point. Sure. Um, so I've traditionally done uh, celebrations on the 100-ish concurrent days. What I mean by that is, so 100, 200, and then 300, I've typically celebrated and said, hey, as a community, we've been here for 100 days, 200, 300 days. Um when I get to 365, it's not going to stop. I've told people that already. I'm, yeah, but a I'm, year is a, is a tremendous milestone. Straight sure. streams? Like, that's that's sure. really impressive. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think that, um, yes, there is something planned. It more than likely is going to be something, you know, uh, it'll be something similar to my celebratory streams in that it'll be something that's a longer stream. Obviously, I'm not going to do my typical five hours on that day. Um, I haven't committed to an exact time frame, but I'm definitely going to have, you know, it's going to be a, a bigger stream for sure. And there's going to be um, as much community interaction as I can possibly make it. So, uh, But what is your uh, kind of plan for the future beyond just one year? Do you plan on just going until <laughs> a thousand or more thousand yeah. is that what you're just gonna end it all or are you just gonna take no, no, one no. day of break <laughs> um I, I i don't know um i know that um so one of the big influences on me as a streamer um is lethal frag lethal frag is the uh twitch hall of fame inaugural inductee very positive community uh he is the creator and first completioner of the two-year live stream challenge um and he's an absolutely fantastic individual uh so kind of if you if you go to his streams he is so positive his community is very positive there's Rarely, if ever, um, you know, like the memes and all of the craziness. It's something that, 
was very meaningful to me. And um, honestly, I'll be being real. I mean, when he fall, man, wow, do you, <laughs> you know, it was like, it's like someone that you look up to and they're showing you some love, some respect that says, Hey, you're doing a good job. I'm, I'm, yeah, they I'm recognize you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, that was definitely a pretty positive moment. But the, the, the thing about that is he did two years straight. If he can do it, I can too, you know? And as far as beyond, beyond a year, I, I don't know. I, I would, I would like to get to, a number that no one has ever done, but I don't know where everybody is in streaking. So I have no idea. We'll see. Yeah, probably now you're getting into a <laughs> probably like 2000 stream. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You're already competing against someone else who's sure. already started. Right. Way ahead of you. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. If they started like one day ahead of you, there's just nothing you can do now. <laughs> right. And, and honestly, it's, it's more about, uh, so Crip, Crip, is a very large streamer. He he kind of there was a, a clip about him um, that felt very impact impactful to me. Crip basically said, and this is a you know summary basically, but you know people depend on me to be here um, because people need stability and patterns in their life, and I'm here every day, so. Although much larger scale, you know, people know that I'm going to be there 6 p.m. Eastern to 11 p.m. Eastern every day, every day. You don't have to be there for me every day, but I will be there for you every day. You know, for five hours a day, I belong to the community. And giving of yourself in that way and helping people, um, is it's a beautiful thing. I mean, I have, I have a guy in my community, uh, Dave. Dave is a member of a metal band, and they literally, <laughs> they literally had an entire venue saying, "Oh Lord," <laughs> which is one of the things that I do on stream. There's an Instagram <laughs> video of him saying it, which then his drummer caught on to it. Another band caught on to it, and then they had the entire like. 600 people saying that and that came from me like what, <laughs> what the world you know and this is in ireland so it kind of comes back to you never know how far you can reach you never know how powerful you are just that one person one seed planted you know uh changed the lives of 600 people for a brief moment and how beautiful is that you know and that's it's, yeah because that's it's, off stream that's not even yeah People who probably didn't even know who you were. Didn't even know who I was. No idea. But it, I had a direct impact on 600 plus people in that moment, and they didn't even know it. Isn't that crazy that something so small, so, you know, you can do something maybe one day, just help somebody out in one way, shape, or form, and they just come back every single day or every other day or something like that, that you can influence someone that much. That's just mind-blowing to me. Yeah, it's one of those things that it's, it's like I said, you don't know how powerful you are as a content creator to affect people's lives positively or negatively, which is why unless you are directly attacking me, I will not be to you ever in a broadcast not you 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 understand what i mean yeah like absolutely as as a viewer i'm going to attempt every possible way to be interacting with you positively if you come in and you're just going crazy i'm more likely to time you out than if you come in um and if it happens repeatedly obviously i have to be in you i have to do what's best for the community as a whole but yeah. generally speaking like i said i think i've only banned six people in 327 days and we're talking about, you know, 35,000 views, et cetera. You know, statistically, it's pretty crazy. You have to do something pretty damn special for me to ban you. You know, um, <laughs> I'm willing to deal with 
some trolling. I'm willing to deal with some of that stuff. And, and the community will come together and beat you up with positivity if you're kind of a knucklehead, you know? So, so this will end the stream basically here. But the last question sure. I'm going to leave you with mm -hmm. is what is the one piece of advice that you would have for aspiring streamers? Do what you say you're going to do. That's it. Simple as that. <laughs> Seriously. I, I know that's a very basic statement, but realistically, if you say you're going to be there at eight o'clock, unless something catastrophic happens, you need to be there for your community at eight o'clock. So do what you say you're going to do. It's, it's a very simple concept. If you run into a situation that you absolutely cannot control, natural disaster, internet outage, whatever the case may be, people are going to understand that. But if you're just at the grocery store and you're mismanaging your time, you're going to create a not healthy environment for yourself because you're not following up on your word. Absolutely. Trust so, is, a, is, a, is a big thing for people. Oh, absolutely. You know, if they can't trust you know, you're going to be there. I mean, what's the point of giving exactly. their time to you right. know, be with you? So that makes yeah. absolute sense. Do do what you say you're going to do. Um, like if, if you say, Hey, I'm going to play such and such a game tomorrow. And then you don't the people that are coming there expecting to, to see that game are going to be disappointed. And obviously you want to avoid that. So it's, it's a practice of being measured, understanding that what you say has import and that you need to um, be consistent and, and, and do what you say you're going to do. So that's the, that's the biggest thing for me. Well, all right. Uh, really appreciate you coming on to the podcast. Sure. Yeah, I really yeah, no appreciate problem. it. Thank you Thank so you much. for having me. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Before we uh, let you go, do you want to just give your social media a shout out? Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> so the Viking beard one, uh, twitter and instagram i also of course uh stream every day 6 p.m eastern to 11 p.m eastern on twitch the viking beard um and uh yeah i that's we're we're working on some other stuff other platforms um but for right now just the twitch uh twitter and instagram so yeah there you go awesome it was uh, all right it was a privilege having you on here, and uh, Thank you. we look forward to following up uh, after your 365 straight day sure. of streaming. So, yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Thank you very much. We would like to give a special thanks to the Viking Beard for joining us on the podcast. You can catch him on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Viking Beard. And make sure you stay tuned to our next episode of the podcast. We release a new episode every Friday. And as always, stay rad, comrades. <laughs>